Hi, I'm Mark Kilgard, and we're resuming uh, part two of a presentation explaining the NV path rendering uh, extension for GPU accelerated path rendering. Uh, when we left out, we, when we left off, we were talking about dashing, and uh, now we're going to continue talking about how you go ahead rendering with path objects in NV path rendering. So uh, there's a this is a stencil then cover uh, paradigm for path rendering. So there's a stencil operation and a cover operation and there's fill versions and stroke versions of each. So in the stencil operation you're only updating the stencil buffer. There's no updates going on to the depth or the color buffer. The commands you use are GL stencil fill path for filling and GL stencil stroke path for stroking. Then once you've stenciled your path into the stencil buffer you can go ahead and do a cover operation. Uh, you can call GL cover fill path NV or GL cover stroke path NV. And this renders whole polygons that are guaranteed to conservatively cover the region updated by the corresponding uh, stencil step. And so the idea is you would configure the stencil test to test against um, pixels that were tagged as belonging to your path. So again, it's a two step rendering paradigm. You stencil and then you cover. Uh, and you can repeat this for each path until you're done drawing your scene. Now, the application controls the cover stenciling and the shading operations, so the application has a considerable control over what happens as far as the shading that goes on. So if you want to do constant color or linear gradients or apply a decal texture or do something really fancy like a fractal or bump map shader, uh, that's all possible. And that's uh, something that's really hard to do with software-based path rendering APIs, but it's really easy to do in NV path rendering. Now, one of the things to note is there's no vertex tessellation or geometry shaders uh, active during either step. And why? Well, it's because paths actually are described through a series of control points, and they really represent rasterized regions. There's not really vertices or triangles the way um, you have in a mesh with conventional 3D rendering. So it really makes sense that the kind of transformation you're doing is a you know, linear projective transformation and it's not something that is arbitrarily specified with some kind of shader. Now at the fragment level you still do get to use your shader. So here's a picture of what filling looks like versus stroking. This is a nice coat of arms and on the left side you can see uh, what the artist authored as far as the filling. And then on the right side, you can see the stroking. And in, in the middle at the bottom, you can see when the filling and the stroking is combined to make the intended content. And you can see while, while you get the idea of the content from just the filling or just the stroking, it's really when you combine the two that you actually get the, the full effect. So here are the prototypes for doing filling and stroking in the stencil step. You'd call GL stencil fill path in V. Uh, you'd pass in the name of a path object that you have created um, and then you have a fill mode that says how to go and do the filling and a mask that says how to go and update what bits of the stencil buffer. Then the cover step it's really simple you just specify the same path object and you give a cover mode. We'll talk about how these parameters work in a little bit. Stroking is pretty much the same thing except when you stencil uh, along with specifying the path object, you give a reference stencil value and you specify a, a bit mask for updating the, st the stencil values. In the cover, it's exactly the same except you're saying cover stroke path instead of cover fill path. So one of the nice things about NV path rendering is you get excellent geometric fidelity for the stroking. Correct stroking is actually really hard. Um, lots of the CPU implementations of stroking uh, do a lot of approximations to to get stroking done. Um, the GPU accelerated approach to stroking really avoids those shortcuts and the, and the reason you can do that is the GPU just has so many programmable floating point operations that it's actually possible for you to compute the, the true stroke point containment. Um, on the right you can see the NV path rendering approach compared to the OpenVG reference rasterizer and you see in this case of a cubic Bezier curve with a very tight initial turn you can see that NV path rendering matches what the reference rasterizer does whereas Cairo and QT implementations and, uh, are, are doing something slightly different that's really not the actual correct path they've got this kind of circular notch um, cut out of it this is just one example. We can show other ones where 
the approximations really are are kind of um, really are approximations. So let's talk about how you would actually go render something really simple like a like a five point star. So we might want to do that two different ways. There's an even odd fill style where if you're sort of doubly or quadruply inside the path, you actually sort of are really outside the path. And that's what you see in the even odd fill style. Or in the non-zero fill style, um, you basically see how many times you're in the path. And as long as it's non-zero, you're inside the path. So how do we specify a path? Well, that's really easy. We pick a path object number. Uh, 42 will do fine. And then we have a string that's specified in the SVG grammar. Um, if you look at this string, it would basically be a move to command and uh, four line two commands, and then we would close the path. And we can specify that really easily with GL path string. Um, that particular string, we could have just gotten it straight out of an SVG file uh, and use it. Alternatively, we can define our paths with, with uh, two arrays of data. And this is showing the exact same way to specify the star, just giving it an array of path commands and a corresponding array of path vertices um, to get it specified. Notice there's a certain amount of flexibility. You can provide the, the path coordinates as shorts, but you can also uh, specify them as floats or any other kind of, um, of, of numeric data type. So as far as initialization, before we can really render anything, you know, of course, we've created our window. Um, but then we're going to clear the stencil buffer to 0 uh, and also clear the, the back color buffer to black. And so that's easy to do with standard OpenGL commands. And then we're going to specify the paths transform. And um, here we're going to use the direct state access extension to make this really clear and easy exactly what we're doing. But we set up projection matrix and we set a model view matrix. And there's nothing really specific to path rendering going on in these slides. Uh, now we're going to go and actually do our rendering. So uh, first, let's do it with the non-zero fill style. We're going to stencil the path. We call GL stencil fill path. We give our path object. Remember, that's number 42. And we're going to give our mode, which is count up, which says, how do we count into the stencil buffer? We're also going to specify a mask of what, picks, what, what bits in the stencil buffer we're going to update. We're going to update the bottom five bits by specifying the 1F mask. Usually, you'd specify the all the bits, the FF mask, so all eight bits of the stencil buffer. But here, just just to show off, we'll, we'll set a mask that's something other than FF. Now we're going to go cover the path. Well, here we can configure the stencil test however we want to. So we enable the stencil test. We say if we're not equal to 0 uh, and we're testing the bits, the, the bottom five bits, then we're going to pass the stencil test. And then the stencil op says if we pass the stencil test, uh, we're actually going to set the stencil buffer back to 0. So that means once we've found a pixel that's in the star, we're going to update it and then set its stencil value back to zero. And that's good because now we'll be ready to render the next path if we want to render more than one. Now we set the color to green. We're just going to use fixed function uh, constant color shading here, um, real easy. And then we're going to cover the fill path. And we're going to say use a bounding box to do that to keep it simple. Uh, and that's going to draw on the right uh, this non-zero fill style five-point star. Uh, now, if we wanted to do the even-odd fill style, it's the same as we had above. It's just we're going to do a different stencil func command. And we're basically going to say not equal. and But we're only going to test uh, the least significant bits. So our mask is going to be set to, to 1 instead of 1F. So we'll really just be looking at the even-odd status. And sure enough, that's going to render our star with the even-odd style. So here's kind of a pipeline that shows this all fitting together. Um, you can see on the right side, uh, we can specify a path object. And then we go and say, let's do the stencil fill command. That enters in the path object here. We're going to do some projective transformation on it. And this is sort of per path um, region operations on the filled region. We can clip and scissor it with standard clip planes. Uh, and then we're going to do window ownership, depth test, stencil test, all that good stuff for sample accessibility. And then for every pixel in the frame buffer that's accessible, we're going to compute the winding number of the path with respect to that particular pixel. 
And then we're going to update the stencil buffer by either incrementing, decrementing, and these are modulo increments and decrements, or inverting the bits of the stencil buffer. Notice that the only thing we're updating here is the stencil buffer. Um, these all are per sample operations. So now let's look at what happens. This is the stencil test. The next slide is going to show the cover step. A same sequence of operations, just, just named slightly different. So let's come back over here and we take our same path object, we go through uh, the path front end, we do our transform, we clip and scissor if any of that stuff's enabled, we do our ownership tests. We've got the stencil test set to not equal zero, um, so things that are already zero don't survive that, but things that are non-zero, they have a stencil update applied, and we're typically going to zero the stencil buffer. We might also replace it to some other value. Then we're going to perform whatever kind of programmable um, fragment shading that we want, and we're going to update the color buffer. And that's how we get a path rendered. Now let's look and add some stroking to the star. So stroking is a form of kind of outlining so that we can see kind of how our path forms. So we want kind of a rim on our star. So first let's set some stroking parameters. We want to set the stroke width to uh, 10.5 units. Uh, remember the, the control points for the star are kind of in various numbers that are on the scale of hundreds. So a stroke width of 10 is a, is a good stroke width size for the, the size of the coordinates. Then we're going to set the join style to round. Notice that there's some round curvature at the corners of, of these stars. Um, and now we're going to stroke it. Again, we have to stencil the path first, but here we're going to use the, the stroke command rather than the fill command, and we're going to mark the stroke samples with a stencil value of 3, and we're going to use the mass to update the, the, the bottom four bits of the stencil buffer. Normally we could do FF and update all the bits, but just to be pedantic, let's go and only limit our updates to the bottom four bits. Now the cover step is going to look a lot like it did before. We have the stencil test, but here instead of saying not equal, we're going to say equal, and we're going to say are we equal three, and if so, we're going to do our update, and we're going to set it back to zero, and we're going to set our color to yellow, and then we're going to issue our GL cover stroke path command, and say we want to render the bounding box, and now you can see that this yellow stroking is now um, around our star. So how does that work through the pipeline? It's very similar. Uh, what you would see that's different, this is the stroking one rather than the filling, and what we're going to see is the stroke point containment operation is done instead of the winding number computation with respect to the fill. Again, all we're doing is updating the stencil buffer. The only operation we can do is, is replace at this point. Um, now how does the cover operation work? Well, it's very similar. Um, it's just we're doing stroking instead of filling. Um, and so we can reset the stencil buffer, but we also get an opportunity to um, run a programmable shader and update the color buffer. So now we've talked about how to do rendering. Let's talk a little bit more about the kinds of state that a path object can have. Um, we've looked at some of the path commands, uh, move to and line to and curve to kind of commands. Um, and there's actually an unbounded number of commands that are allowed in, an, in a path object. So, you know, our star had, you know, a couple commands, basically six, um, but we could have a very complicated path that had literally thousands or tens of thousands of commands, um, and we would be able to render that just fine with NV path rendering. There's no limit to the number of commands that can be in a path. Um, now, path coordinates they have to match up with the commands. So for example, if you have a cubic Bezier segment, that's going to have six coordinates representing three 2D control points. And a cubic Bezier curve really needs four control points, but there's an implicit initial control point, which was the prior path's endpoint. There's a bunch of path parameters, and we've shown these before in a table, um, but you can basically set stroke widths and end caps and join styles and dash patterns. Um, you can also go and query your metrics. So here are the calls you use to both get um, to, to get the parameters. Uh, there's also some some parameters that are derived state that you can actually query to get back what their values are. 
Now if you create a path object from a glyph in a font, you can actually go and get glyph metrics. So if you have something like the lowercase letter g that you want to make a glyph from, you can get all of these metrics that are the standard metrics available in FreeType 2. And they're really the standard metrics that are available in you know, TrueType and OpenType and PostScript fonts. So these are made available to you. And you can get both per glyph metrics and then also per font face metrics. And you can use these to help do the layout that you need to do um, to arrange text appropriately. Envy Path Rendering gives you these metrics, but it doesn't try to do anything about actually doing the layout. So here are the actual per glyph metric names, and you can see these here along with their description, and there's a bit mask that you use to query these. Now there's also per font face metric names, there's a few more of these, and so you can query all these to find out what the status of your um, of your font face and you can pick any glyph and get the per font face um, parameters that correspond to that glyph. Now one thing that is important to do is do kerning and that's a, a feature of layout and NV path rendering does try to avoid um, the more general issues of text layout but kerning requires uh, you to know information about uh, metrics between the relationship between two adjacent uh, glyphs and so there is a query that allows you to get the path spacing so that you can actually go and properly kern these so that they look aesthetically pleasing so there's a call gl get path spacing it has a couple different ways that you can actually get back kerning information and the kerning information that's provided back to you is immediately useful for instance path rendering and that's what we'll talk about next uh, we're going to rejoin with part three uh, talking about path instancing.